this access list challenge, the goal is simple. We want to prevent the host at IP address 1.1.1.1 from being able to telnet to 3.3.3.3. Now, as we take a look at this filtering, we're going to do it right here on R2. And so we want the goal of 1.1.1.1 to not get access to 3.3.3.3 via telnet. So that's the goal. We want to deny that. So let's we'll make a little note right there. Okay, so no problem. We've got some loopbacks configured on these routers. Loopbacks are just logical interfaces. R1 has the actual loopback of 1111, and R3 has the loopback of 333, and there's full reachability. So if we're trying to deny just Telnet between those two locations, there's several things that we get to consider. Number one, if we deny Telnet from that location to the other location, we want to make sure we permit everything else because if we just deny one line in an access list unfortunately there's an implied deny all at the end and everything would be stopped you can think of the access list as a bouncer and let's go ahead and draw this bouncer and here he is and uh, he's a big guy and you can just envision him if we're going to apply the access list inbound on FA00, think about him as a bouncer who's standing at the door of FA00, and he's checking every single packet before it comes in. And when a packet steps up to the door, the bouncer says, hold on, I have to see if you're allowed in, because it's applied inbound on that interface. And the bouncer looks at line number one of his access list and reads it. If it's a match, with the packet, then he says, well, it matches, you can be permitted or denied, and he'll do one of those two things. If line one doesn't match, he'll then drop down to line number two, and he'll read that. If that's a match, then he'll permit or deny based on that match on that statement. If that doesn't match, he'll go down to line three, and he goes in order. Once he gets a match, he stops processing. He says, basically, okay, it's a match, it's a permit, you go in, go in, and he goes on to the next packet. If he goes through the entire list of permits and denies in the access list and doesn't find you on the list, the bouncer assumes that you're not invited and will deny you. That's the implied deny. So think of it, an access list, if we're applying it inbound on FA00 to stop the telnet traffic, think of it as the bouncer looking at every single packet coming in and then simply saying yes or no to each pack as it goes down the list. So let's go ahead and create an access list. And the cool thing is, is that we can walk through the syntax of it as well as the options with the access list as we go in. Now, because we're filtering just Telnet, we cannot use a standard access list because a standard access list can't say that the balancer is looking at. A standard access list doesn't have the ability to say, I'm looking for... TCP port 23. A standard access list is only looking for source IP address. That's it. So we're going to use an extended access list and we're going to apply it inbound on FA0 slash 1 on R2. So let's go to R2. The first thing we're going to do is check and see whether or not we have any access list currently on the box. Show access list. Now that doesn't mean if, if some did show up, it wouldn't mean that they're applied two interfaces, it would simply mean they exist. It's always a good practice to check before you start creating access lists so you don't accidentally start adding to the bottom of an existing access list when you intended to create a new one. So let's go into configuration mode and create a new access list. Access list, and there's actually a couple ways of doing this. We could say access list you know, 100 and start to go ahead and specify the details or we could say IP access list extended, and we'll, we'll call it our list. And that puts us into access list configuration mode. Either way, in this example, we're making a named extended access list. If we did it line by line by line from global config, that would be a numbered access list. Effectively, they're going to have the same result when we apply this. So our first line of the access list is going to be deny. I want to deny, and then you specify the source, actually the protocol. So we have all these options here. Um, IP simply says if it's IP version 4. That's basically, if it's IP, that part's a match. We could, however, specify 
another layer 4 protocol like TCP. And that's what we're going to do here because we're looking for specifically Telnet, which runs on TCP, a layer 4 protocol, and specifically port 23. So this access list says we're looking for TCP, and we're looking for it from the host 1.1.1.1. So that's the source. If we didn't want to use the keyword host, we could simply put in 1.1.1.1 and then four zeros for the wildcard mask, but it's much easier to type in host if you're looking for a specific source. And then the destination is also host 3.3.3.3. And we're going to say, now, this is going to match if the traffic is TCP based, if it's a TCP packet, and source from host 1111, all 32 bits, exactly matching that, destined for host 3333. If I pressed enter, that would be a terrific mistake because this is not only going to deny Telnet, it's going to deny anything that's TCP, which would include FTP, HTTP, and anything else that uses TCP. So we'll specify additionally a consideration that says if the destination, the port we're going to, is 23, which is Telnet. So now in the balancer, if we applied this access list, as he reads through, if a packet was TCP and from host 1111 and destined to host 33333 and destined to port TCP port 23, then it would be a match. Now, if it's not a match, in fact, let me do this. <laughs> let me take that out. I'm going to put a no in front of that. I'm going to put it back again with the keyword log at the end so that it'll generate a syslog message when that traffic does show up. I'm then going to create a permit IP any any, which will let all the other traffic flow through. If we do a show access list, which the do command simply avoids us having to go back all the way to configure uh, privilege mode to issue the command. Do simply says, pretend, pretend you're at privilege mode and issue this command. So we have two lines in our access list. We have the first line, which is denying the TCP traffic from host 1111 to 3333 if the destination port equals 23, and we're going to log that. And then the second line permits everything else. Now we're going to go to interface configuration mode right here on the R2 on FA00 and we're going to apply that access list inbound which tells the balancer hey now any new packets trying to get in you read this list and make sure that they're permitted it, for example line 1 from the access list should be a deny for the telnet if we tried the telnet so we'll go to interface FA0 slash 0 and the way you apply this is access group <laughs> is IP access group and then you name it so if we called the access list our list we'd say IP access group space the name of your access list space and then you'd go ahead and specify if you want to apply this inbound to this interface or outbound see it's up to the balancer to pay attention to what we put here if we set out he would simply check every packet before it tries to leave the router to see if it matches that if we say in, he checks any packet about to come in. So we've got logging enabled. If we do a show log, we can verify that logging to the console is enabled. And we have our access list. I just do that again. Show run begin access list. And that will show us our access list in the configuration. So we can verify it as well. And I'll scroll up just a little bit so you can all see that. All right, so there's our access list, just two simple lines. And if we want to see how it's applied, we can do a show run interface FA0 slash 0, and that will show us the running configuration just for that interface. So there we have the access list applied inbound on the FA00 interface. So let's go to R1, and let's verify we can do a ping to 3333. Now that works because we're actually, that's ICMP protocol one at layer four. So that's going from R1 to R4. Also, it's being sourced off this interface. It's also important to know that we're sourcing a ping from the closest interface to the destination. So if we were to look at that with a protocol analyzer, it would have said this is a ICMP packet sourced from 10.0.0.1 going to 3.3.3.3. The bouncer sees that and says, hmm, uh, I, looking at line number one, that's not a match. Looking at line number two, Permit any, yeah, that's a match, and he lets it go because of the permit IP any. 
So let's actually do a ping. Uh, and let's source it. We'll do a ping 333. We'll source that ping from our loop back zero. Or we'll, we'll source it from 1.1.1.1. Uh, .1 and that way, that really is traffic sourced from 1.1.1.1 going to 3333. I want to make sure we had full reachability, that our routing protocol was working correctly. So it is, and that's great. So let's do a telnet to 3.3.3.3. I'm expecting this to work too. Why? Because our source address here is 10001. And as a result, the bouncer says, well, that doesn't match line one. Line two says, permit any, you may come in. And there goes our traffic. So let's do one more trick. And that is we'll source this telnet session. And we'll use a source interface of loopback zero, which is 1.1.1.1. This should not work, because the bouncer should see this packet that is destined for 3333, three, source from 1111. It's TCP. It's port 23. And it should deny it. And the log message should reference that as well. So let's try it. And sure enough, we got the big, this isn't going to happen. We didn't make the telnet session. But if we go over to R2 and take a look at it, we can see that our access list killed it. It even tells us. So it's a syslog message level 6. That's right here. And it's saying the access list called our list denied TCP source from 1111. And it has the source port that I use for that connection. And if we scroll over to the right, it actually shows it uh, destined for TCP, uh, the host 3333 destination port 23 off to the very far right. And that's it. So a simple access list, easy to do. One other thing, if we now do a show access list, It'll also give us hit counts. There's our hit count right there on the deny, where it wouldn't let that go through. That was that one we just tried. And earlier, with our pings, our telnets that did work, here's the hit counts. And those come up free of charge with extended access list. The log up here is because of our log keyword. And the actual counting, or the counting of the numbers of times it happens, that's done by default on extended ACLs. So that's it. Simple access list. Think of it as a bodyguard. When an access is applied inbound, the bodyguard is sitting right at the interface looking at all packets coming toward him. If you specify the access list outbound, the guard would simply do a 180 and look at every packet that's trying to leave that router interface. And before it leaves, it would check the list for the permits and the denies. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.